This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Collins v. Collins. You all have been together and married 13 years, but allegations of infidelity have you living in separate homes. Can you explain to me, Ms. Collins, why you are here? Yes, Your Honor. I'm here because I believe my husband's cheating on me. He's an ordained minister, and I believe he's been laying hands on every woman around town. Also, our sex life is different. And if he's been cheating on me, I'm leaving him. Oh. Well, there it is. That wraps it up, doesn't it? And you say he's an ordained minister. Yes, yes, and Your you Honor. believe he's laying hands on everybody. <laughs> First of all, none of that's true. All right. Well, what are you here to show? I'm here to show I love my wife. Secondly, to prove my innocence, and thirdly, to restore my marriage. Okay. All right. Yeah. But you are living in separate homes like right now, is that correct, this Mr. Collins? This is correct. What has this been like for you? I've tried to do everything right, and it's like it didn't work. Like the fiery darts was able to penetrate. And with them penetrating, it caused me to be separated from my wife. And, and when you're suffering and when you're going through it, you got to look back on the good times. What were the good times like when you all got together? Well, how I met my wife. Yeah. My former fiance, she was battling leukemia. And okay. she was in uh she was in the hospital. So this was... is a different woman you were engaged yes. to. Yes. Okay. One day I didn't have to go to work. Headed to the hospital. It was raining. And it started to rain pouring down harder and I seen the sister walking. So I turned around and asked her if I could give her a ride because it was raining and let her know I wasn't trying to pull no hanky-panky or nothing like that. I immediately told her about my fiancé, upon which I dropped her off to her family member's house. I went to the hospital. When I made it to the hospital, my fiancé said, you met her. I said, yes, I did meet someone. When you get to the hospital to see your fiancé who's fighting leukemia, yes. she says you met her. Yes, and may I expound on that? Okay, because I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, because I, <laughs> this is the crucial thing is that when I came home one day, this is before she had to go to the hospital. Okay. I came in, tears screaming down her face. She says, I'm not the one you meant to be with. I'm only to train you up for her. I immediately told her, stop talking like that. You know, you're not going nowhere. Okay. And then, uh, she proceeded to tell me, yes, I know. My prayer has already been answered. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, yes. she basically had a prophecy about yes, this college. Ma yes, ma'am. Woo! Ooh, Ms. I got chills. Okay. Miss Collins, that's a lot to live up to. Yeah. That's what did you love about him in the beginning? I loved about him because he was so honest. Mm. He was very honest and he was such a gentleman. How did he make you feel at the beginning of your relationship? Um, like a queen, like I was everything. It's just it. You are everything. That's why I'm here. And now how do you feel? Like trash to him. Like he don't even care about me. That's not so, true at and all. And you believe this is all because he's cheating with somebody else? Yes. That I have not I believe done. that he has cheated with someone else. What are the warning signs that you've seen that make you believe that? Well, one of the warning signs was uh, my husband and I, we watch porn, and we saw some things, and we wanted some condoms to try some different things. Well, when I get home, he already has the condoms not in a, not in a package. They looked old. And being that we wasn't getting alone, he was Not supposed true. to wait for me to go get them. We Not were supposed true. to do that together. Not true. So, we're not so you're old. wondering who he had these old condoms for, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, tell yes. us what happened. Yes, I did go get the condoms, but it wasn't like she think. I went to the store to get me some loose cigarettes. The man behind the counter told me they did sell singles. Opposed to spending five dollars some change on the box, I bought three singles. Maybe it was a bad judgment on me going and getting them by myself. Yes, I don't it was. deny that. But as far as me having them for someone else, that is not true. I solely went and bought them for the purpose of what me and my wife had discussed. But the problem is, you think that he got them or had them yes, for somebody else. Them. Yes, Your Honor. Why would I have something and put it in plain sight for you to find if I was trying to hide or do anything deceitful? And Ms. Collins, you don't believe him? No. Other than finding the life. condoms, what other reason do you have to believe that he's cheating? I saw a text one night. We laying in bed 3 o'clock in the morning. How you doing, stranger? And then another one, uh, that exact stranger. And okay. another one, okay. 3 o'clock in the morning from a female that I know saying she can't sleep. Okay. All right. Okay. And you submitted those 
rules. He didn't defend it, me, or nothing. So and you submitted those recollections to the court, is I that right? I sure did. All right, so the first one you mentioned, this is from a woman that says, how are you doing, stranger? Yes, Your Honor. And this what? is at 3 in the morning? Yes, Your Honor. And you're like, okay, that's a phrase you use with somebody you haven't seen in a while. Ain't Hold nothing up. open that time of night Hold for up. legs, Your Honor. <laughs> That concerns me, but it's the next one that's, that's causing me some issue. This is another text that you saw from another woman. That I know, yes. That you know, yes. and it says, I can't sleep. Three o'clock in the morning. This is from morning. three o'clock in the morning. My husband's saying she can't sleep. Now, to me... I, t I texted her back and said, well, tell your husband that. He didn't text her back and said nothing. First of all, that's not true yeah. at all. Well, Mr. Collins, my concern is this text you received at 3 in the morning okay. from another woman that says, I can't sleep. Right. To me, that's just like just a step below you up. Exactly. Okay. So, and you know what? Right. When you get a text okay. at 3 in the morning right. that says, you up, exactly you know what, what that means, right? I, I hear exactly okay. what you're saying. Okay, now, here's my question. Why are you receiving late night texts from women saying, how you doing, stranger, and... I can't sleep. Okay. The first one, the how you doing stranger thing, is that someone that I met, I talked yeah. with her nephew, giving him some counseling, that was it. Never had any relations with this woman nor from anywhere else. Here's yes. the problem. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it takes a certain level of comfortability right. to decide... To do such a thing. Yes. I understand what you said. Exactly. But in his uh, defense, that... he can't control who texts him. Maybe, All right, but well, why... Uh, okay, from, well, uh, can you explain to me I can't sleep? Because that... my response would have been so... <laughs> oh, oh, but he didn't uh, but say listen, nothing. Listen, listen. I, I didn't have myself. a chance to respond because but, she t took my phone and did what she wanted but, to but do. But why are... Uh, but, opposing... But the question is, no, the question is... Yes, and why... I did address it. No, no, no. But, but because you, I didn't address you're not it... Li Mr. Collins, like you're not she listening. wanted me to. You're not listening. You're not listening. I'm listening, sir. Listen to me. Why is a woman texting you at 3 in the morning saying, I can't sleep? That, I can't answer why she put it in that context at all. But me so is this a woman head. that you have a relationship no, with? No, not at all. Is this sir. a woman that you've been intimate with? No. She obviously felt comfortable enough with you out of all the people in the world to text at 3 in the morning, I can't sleep. And I do understand, in hindsight, I should have did a little bit more than what I did at the time. Miss Collins, what else do yes. you have? Um, one of my co-workers pulled me to the side one day. Oh, my uh, God. She's a stripper, mind you. <laughs> she pulls me to the side one oh day. She God. said, your husband gave me a ride home. Out of line right there, because she shouldn't have never been in the car without me. Then she say, your husband asked me to do a private dance for her. That's a lie. She a told lie. you this. She, she was uh, crying with tears in her eyes because everybody at my job liked him. Mm. And they felt that they could talk to him. And, you know, that's why she would talk to him sometimes. But when he mm. got out of line... Would she say he asked her to uh, strip for him private? Okay. So what okay. did you do when you got that information? I asked him about it. And what did no, you say, Mr. Collins? Me. She didn't ask well, me. Well, he anything. gonna say I told him. I... Don't don't tell me what I'm gonna say. Okay. It's what happened. She immediately told me she believed the woman over me, somebody who she's been with for 13 years now. She immediately told me, oh, I think you're the liar. She's telling the truth. Did you give the stripper a ride home? Yes. Okay. Did you tell the stripper that you wanted her to give you a private dance? No. Well, did you say anything close to that that she could misconstrue? Yes, she, she could have. What did you say? I told her she was saying that the club that she was working at wasn't finished being remodeled or whatever. I said, well, maybe you need to do some private dances. Nothing else. That's all you said? That's all I said. And you had no sexual none, contact? None, none, whatsoever. I you, you, you. <laughs> Tell me what the stress in your face is. I'm... Something I, what somebody you... does. She's a stripper. No, I'm just trying to get my arms around an ordained minister telling a stripper <laughs> make some extra right. money okay. for private and dancing. Let tell you why. And let me tell you why. All right. Let me tell you why. Because, uh -huh. first of all, I can't change who she is, but that don't mean I'm supposed to look down on her. I would have said to her, okay, your club isn't open. This is an opportunity for you to find something different. Let's talk about your skill set. <laughs> That's what you do. It ain't got nothing to do with judgment. That might have been your opportunity to give her a different role that would lead to church. I'm just saying. Amen.
And I agree with you. So, I don't know. It's all kind of strange. Miss well, Collins? Yes, Your Honor. Are there any other women that you're concerned that your husband is cheating with? Yes, Your Honor. This is, uh, this is last but not least. <laughs> I'm at church one day. <sighs> And uh, one of the ministers at the church, one of the ministers come up to me and say, ask your husband to stop calling my daughter phone at the 10 o'clock at night. Now let's, now let's really find out why I was calling the phone. I say, what? Calling your daughter? For, I wanted to know what for too. Why are you calling so, someone's so daughter at the 10 o'clock at night? And don't tell me it was to tell her to go do some private dancing, please. <laughs> I'm glad everyone's had a good laugh, but it ain't laughing matter 10, for me. You don't call nobody after Excuse 10. me, I'm talking again. I, I haven't interrupted you. Well, that's not true. I was calling true. these numbers because I found them in her phone. It wasn't just that one number. I called several numbers. Are like you that. suggesting to this court, was it you were going through your wife's phone... Investigating. Investigating, and so you were trying to find out who these numbers yes. belonged to. and yeah. that's why I was calling her number, to find out who it really was. But there was no conversation with this lady? None. You never called her since? No. You had not called her before? No. There's no relationship of None. any sexual kind with this young None lady? None whatsoever. None. This is a mess. It is. It yeah. is. This is a mess. mess. Yeah. It is a mess. Yeah. Because you've got... Yeah. You all have been together for 13 years. If it comes back that he's cheating, you're done. I'm done. I'm done. Because well, I don't deserve that. I don't. But I don't. Well, let's look Let at me the ask you. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Collins. But if it comes back that he has in fact not been cheating, can he come home? He, I love my husband. Yes. 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 Please. Okay. Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Collins, I think we have enough evidence. <sighs> let's talk about what we got. Okay. We have text messages from women in the middle of the night to include I can't sleep. We have a woman who comes to Mrs. Collins and says, your husband asked me for a private dance. Then there was a woman who confronted Mrs. Collins at church, a parishioner, saying, tell your husband not to call my daughter after 10 o'clock. And then the final thing is, he comes up with these old condoms and she's concerned that he had these condoms because she's like, well, who are you using them with? To get to the bottom of this, this court has done a complete and full investigation. At this time, the court will hear from former military interrogator and expert Lena Sisko to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please report Ms. Sisko in. Lena Sisko. Ms. Sisko, how are you today? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? Doing well, thank you. It's good to see you. Tell us what you did to investigate this case. I first had the accused write a witness statement, which I analyzed for any indicators of deception and truthfulness, and then I interrogated Mr. Collins to see if he was cheating. What were your initial findings? When Mr. Collins came into the room, he was not friendly. He didn't want to look me in the eye, and he didn't want to shake my hand. After he sat down and we engaged in a conversation, he began to open up. At one point, we started talking about his wife, and he jumped up out of the chair and he headed to the corner of the room and I could hear him, he was breathing really heavy and he started to cry. He had an emotional breakdown. Wow. What did you learn further after that? I asked Mr. Collins a lot of questions about the numerous allegations made against him. He admitted to me that he did indeed give a woman that works with his wife a ride. He admitted to me that he did have conversations late night with a woman. As he was telling me these two things, I saw no indicators of deception. I believe he was being truthful. However, he did admit something to me as we did talk, and he told me that before they were married, yes. he did cheat on his wife, and it was about two to three women, and that was about 2009, 2010. Yes. I don't care about that. So, what did you conclude regarding infidelity during your marriage? He gave me no signs of deception. And so, overall, I believe that Mr. Collins is being truthful, and he has not cheated on his wife since they've been married. <laughs> I love you, honey. I love you, too. I take my, my vows very seriously. I love you, too. Yes. Those are tears of joy I'm yes. looking at. Yes, they Tell are, him. I love my husband. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> 
right, we gotta go home too. Y'all, y'all break that up. All right, Miss Collins. Oh. Now that's a. You know what? You don't even see men with handkerchiefs beside my daddy. I'm glad. Oh, and my husband, my better half. Wait, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, now you don't put me out there now. So now I gotta, I gotta prove. I do carry a handkerchief. You don't, you don't put me out there now. So, Miss Collins, I guess you're going home and he's coming home. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and let me just say to you, I am so happy for both of you. Amen. But you're going to have to pull up and stop being so suspicious. Yeah. And Mr. Collins, I am so glad that you came out of this unscathed. Talk to me. I tried to stay humble because. You let your integrity speak for itself. And I really apologize for any hurt <laughs> I caused you. And I pray to God that this restores it and we be back whole again. <laughs> you all go celebrate another 1,300 years together. <laughs> yes. And as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, healthy, meaningful relationship. Court is adjourned. Thank you.